Lastly, because it means that God's grace is at work in our lives. When we forgive someone, when we extend forgiveness to someone who has wronged us and sinned against us, offended us, it's God's grace at work in our hearts and in our lives. As Philemon is no doubt standing there reading this letter, he finally gets to the end of the letter. And he's thinking to himself, how am I going to do this? <clears throat> I know this is the right thing to do. I'm supposed to forgive Onesimus. I know that. But I don't know if I can. You ever talk to somebody like that struggling with forget? They know what is right. They know what they're supposed to do. But they're just struggling with the, how do I do this? I, I don't know if I can forgive Onesimus. Like I said in my last message, sometimes forgiving someone is not an easy thing to do. I will never forget when I was pastoring there at Stanley Heights Baptist Church in East Ridge, Tennessee, there was a lady that was a part of our Deaf Bible College there studying to become a missionary. God was working in her heart and life, and eventually she made an appointment, came in and talked with me and went through extensive counseling with me. She had been sexually molested by her uncle at a very young age, scarred her for life. We went through all this about coming to that place to where she needed to forgive her uncle. Her uncle, though, had already died. She says, how, how do I forgive him? He, he's already gone. I'm, how do I extend forgiveness to him? And the only thing I could come up with was I said, Don, you, you need to sit down and you need to write a letter to him. Sit down, write a letter. Put all that you have said to me in this letter, and then I want you to extend that forgiveness. You, you know what you need to do because all of this is holding you in a prison. Your uncle's dead and gone, but you're still struggling with this. And so she did that, and she wrote that letter. It was several pages long, and she brought it to the next counseling session. I said, were, were you able to to write the letter. She said, I, I did. Here, here's the letter. And she handed it to me with an envelope. And I took it and I said, I don't need this letter. It's your letter. She said, aren't you going to read it? I said, nope, I'm not going to read it. She said, what do I do with the letter? I said, well, I got a trash can right here. And here's some matches. I want you to set this letter on fire and burn it. And it's going to symbolize that this is a done issue. It's done. She sort of looked at me, but then she did it. Today, she's serving the Lord, gotten beyond that in her life. Sometimes it's not easy to forgive someone. But Paul ends his letter with these words, verse 25. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. If Philemon was wondering how he was going to muster up the wherewithal to forgive Onesimus, Paul reminds him that it will take God's grace. In the flesh, forgiveness is not possible because the flesh only wants what? Vengeance. That's the flesh. Forgiveness can only become a reality in our lives by God's amazing grace. Keep in mind that it was God in his grace that forgave us of all of our sins, all of our iniquities, all of our transgressions. And now it will take that same divine grace for us to forgive someone else who has sinned against us. The book of Philemon leaves us somewhat hanging at the end, right? Because you know where I'm going with this. Well, did he? <laughs> Did he forgive Onesimus or not? I'm of the opinion that he did. I believe he understood forgiveness. Paul gave all of these reasons why Philemon need to, needed to forgive Onesimus. But I close with a very interesting observation from Dr. John MacArthur's commentary on the book of Philemon. And I certainly don't agree with everything that MacArthur writes, but he has an interesting observation here. He writes these words. Half a century later, 
The church father Ignatius in Smyrna on his way to martyrdom in Rome wrote a letter to the Ephesian church. In that letter he writes, and we quote, I received your large congregation in the person of Onesimus, your bishop, or i.e. your pastor in this world, a man whose love is beyond words, end of quote. There's no way to know for sure if this is the Onesimus, the same Onesimus that we're reading about here in the book of Philemon. But keep in mind, what did the name Onesimus mean? Useful, profitable, right? It's quite possible that Onesimus, or that name, was a common name that a master would give a slave. And if that's true, that would be Possibly the same Onesimus. What would be the odds of a bishop, a pastor being named Onesimus? If it is a slave name, then I'm prone to think that the likelihood is that it could be the same person. If it was Onesimus, he would have been a very old man at that point, probably around 70 to 80 years old. But just imagine if it was, okay? I, I'm not saying with confidence it absolutely is, but imagine if it was because it would mean that Philemon not only forgave Onesimus, but he also emancipated him. Set him free completely. You remember Paul said, I'm sending him back to you, not just as a servant, but as a brother in Christ. His relationship has changed now. And Onesimus, the once runaway slave, is now the pastor of the church at Ephesus. Now, if that is true, that's an incredible story about the power of forgiveness. To forgive someone. Only good things happen when we forgive someone. Bad things happen when we don't forgive someone. They don't experience the forgiveness that you're extending to them and you have all that unresolved anger, all that bottled up unforgiving spirit within your heart and soul. Only good things happen when we forgive someone. And I believe that if this is true, and I have no way of determining whether it is or not. But imagine Onesimus, the lost runaway slave, <laughs> who meets Paul in God's sovereignty in the city of Rome, gets saved, gets trained for ministry under Paul, and Paul looks at him and says, you've got just one unresolved issue in your life. You need to go back and you need to make things right with Philemon. And I'm going to write a letter for you and Tychicus to take with you back. And Philemon reading that letter and the church at Colossae reading that letter, Philemon forgives him, sets him free, and eventually he becomes a pastor. Wow, what a story. <laughs> but do you realize that same kind of story could happen in your life? Sometimes we read Bible stories and we go, wow, that was back in the days. God's still working in a powerful way today. And no telling what would happen if you extended forgiveness to that person who has wronged you, sinned against you, offended you by maybe what they said or what they did. Turning them loose. Letting God deal with it. This plays out in our everyday life. Forgiveness. God knows how to keep the record and God can deal with that person better than you can. Can you turn it loose and say, okay, God, I'm not going to try to solve this issue. I'm going to let you deal with it. Turn loose of it. Be done with it. Wash your hands and move on with life. Extend forgiveness. Allow God to deal with that person. God knows how to take care of people better than we do. Right? Right? When we try to go around straightening everybody out and correcting, criticizing, judging, condemning, then we're trying to play the role of God. You and I are not God. So we got to let God do what God does best. <laughs> and God can sovereignly work behind the scenes in an amazing way, as only he can do. The power of forgiveness. Why forgive? I gave you four reasons tonight, straight from the book of Philemon. Let's forgive 
Let's learn to extend forgiveness to others the same way that God extended forgiveness to us. Amen.